Going to yeah, give you a drum roll. This is it. Nicely done. Interesting weekend. We're deviating yeah. from the franchise fair. No Deadpool, no Avengers. Some interesting stories here for us. Two wildly different movies, and the first one is based on a true story of Tammy Oldham Ashcraft, and uh, her and her fiance in 1983 embarked on a voyage across the Pacific. They intended to go from Tahiti to San Diego. What they did not plan for was hitting a Category 4 hurricane, and she ended up being stuck in the middle of the ocean for well over a month, and Shailene Woodley and Sam Claflin star in this riveting true story. Take a look. There you go. I mean, that's the situation. She wakes up after this storm, dealing with the aftermath. You're in the middle of the ocean, terrifying. And what it does, it, it intersperses the flashbacks to show the romance that blossomed between the two. That was where I ran into a couple of issues with the movie, but it's gorgeous to look at. And a lot of it was shot on the actual ocean, which I appreciated, so I wasn't distracted by a lot of CGI. It looked very authentic. Shailene Woodley is the anchor to bring a story like this to life and, and bring you into that intensity. How did she fare? Well, Shailene Woodley showed her chops early on in The Descendants with George Clooney, and uh, she's continued to do some amazing work. She really carries this film. She's intense. And the director of this movie made Everest, which is a sprawling ensemble cast movie, another kind of survival disaster pick, but that one uh, was quite broad, and it dealt with a lot of different characters. It's a more intimate journey in this one and the camera a lot lingers right on Woodley's face for a lot of uh, intense close-ups and reactions to show what she was going through and she really shines there because uh, you're dealing with that you know that situation like in Castaway or All is Lost with Robert Redford where it's essentially you battling the elements and yeah she's also got her fiance there he's severely injured and she has to sort of help him but i mean look at this i mean imagine the the situation here that you're dealing with so what i didn't really care for though was when they went back and forth too much between the backstory and what was happening with the uh, survival drama and that stuff was pulling me in and then right as i was getting enticed by it it would go back and kind of do the sappy romance thing and that stuff was a little clunky because the writing wasn't very strong they do have good chemistry but it had a couple of those typical romantic tropes that kind of took me out of it but this stuff here which is dealing with the situation being marooned in the middle of the ocean. Very, uh, very effectively done. How many hammers for a drift? I'm gonna go three out of five for this one. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, you talk about the importance of writing. Let's talk about the stunt comedy that is Action Point. They didn't have a lot of writing in this one, but man alive, they have a lot of stunts. So Johnny Knoxville with the kind of jackass-esque Pratt Falls in Action Point, and it's set in 1979, uh, and he runs this amusement park that doesn't have any safety regulations. It's not exactly up to code. This is exactly the kind of gags you're going to get in this movie. So he's an older gentleman, and he, they see this commercial, and then he's recounting with his granddaughter about these bygone glory days before helicopter parenting and before PC culture and the nanny state. And it's the story of him and his daughter reconnecting uh, one summer uh, at Action Point. Now, this barely qualifies as a movie in terms of story. I'm actually surprised it was released in theaters because it's barely a Netflix movie. But I have to say, the stunts are incredible. Johnny Knoxville was injured the most on this movie than anything he's done. He had four concussions, a broken hand, a fractured eye socket, a torn meniscus, and he lost a few teeth. So I gotta give credit to the fact that he and the rest of the cast put themselves out there with these stunts. It's very immature. It kind of sends a bad message at times. And again, there's just barely any plot. This is pretty much for the Jackass audience. Oh yeah. If you didn't love Jackass, would you would you, would you want to see this? No, you're probably gonna be pretty offended by a lot of it. It's the actual movie itself feels like 75 minutes and then there's like 10 minutes minutes of bloopers and outtakes, so just know what you're going to get into. How many hammers? Two out of five. Two out of five? Yeah. Okay, that's it for hammers.